Hey -o, everyone, welcome back to Tianopolis. So we are finally going into the coaster, which I have teased for I think 5 episodes right now. And I have to immediately say I'm not the best at making coasters. My philosophy surrounding coasters is just make the surrounding look so pretty that you forget you're on a coaster. <laughs> yeah, that's also with this coaster. It is a water coaster, which is a first for me. I have never actually built a water coaster and it was a bit of experimenting of like, all right, how much does the water section kind of decrease the excitement and fear and everything? Or basically just the stats because I had no idea. I later found out that it's like, if you want to have somewhat good stats, the water sections need to be not that large because I wanted to approach this coaster as like oh yeah it's a coaster but it's mostly a dark ride yeah for me it's just like I want to have my coasters almost always completely in the green for some reason like I think that's just an OCD tick of me that's just like even though I'm really bad at coasters the game must think I'm good at coasters. <laughs> but anyway, again, not the greatest at coasters, but I wanted to try it out and I just wanted a coaster on this part of the park, which did tie in with the kind of water team that is in the harbor area, because we are in the harbor area. We are like right opposite to the ferals. And for a long time I thought like, all right, do I want it on the side of the ferals or at the back of the ferals? But lately I was just thinking like, it would be a pretty good eye candy if it was on the side of the ferals because then you would just see it from the open area that is the harbor, or at least the waterfront of the harbor is kind of more open. And if it was at the back of the ferals, the ferals would just completely hide it. So then you would only have, well, I'm saying like, oh, you would have only one point of viewing it, but like with the placement that it's now, it has two viewing points or points of view where it looks kind of good. But yeah, for the coaster, there are actually three splashdown sections, I would say, and also three lift hills. In a way, the lift hills are like on the same, well, not completely on the same place, but I don't know. For some reason, it's just working for me. Also, it took a long time to actually get it working properly. I think most of that I did off screen because it took almost three hours to get it working. Again, I'm not good at coasters. And I wanted to have the water section go straight to the ferals, but yeah, that would work because then in the meantime, between getting to the station and yeah, the excitement would just drop. So then I thought like, oh, I can make this final splashdown so that the gigantic bridge, I, I'm looking up against actually building that bridge because as you might know, I hate building bridges. But if the splashdown happens, that bridge is also soaked. I checked it out actually. But I think the most time I spent actually with this coaster was getting the coaster back to the station. Because it would just not work. Even now in its like, the coaster of course is going to be finished in this episode. We are actually also making the first drop section or the first drop area in this video. But yeah, it was really annoying <laughs> because it's just, it didn't really work. And I wanted to have like a section where you basically, I, what is the proper name for it? But it's, yeah, you immediately also see, yeah, the ride exceeds the G-Force limit. That was the most problematic thing for a long time, probably because of the steep drop because yeah they're, they're basically just three 
parts that are just dive coasters. <laughs> but what was I saying again? Oh yeah, with getting the train back into the station, it um, it took some time, and I wanted to have some kind of like it's not a switch track, but just a place where the trains would, you know, when the ride isn't operating, the trains would sit there instead of in the station. But um, it just didn't really work just as I wanted and then I get frustrated and I, uh, yeah. Anyway, eventually it did work. Eventually I had to kind of turn back the OCD of having every stat in the green because in the end everything is green except for fear. Like, I think it's like a 6.96 on excitement, which I'm really happy with. But besides that, because, I mean, for me, as I say, probably a million times by the time this park ends, which I really think it's going to take a hundred episodes. But by the time this park ends, I'm probably just like, that's going to be my catchphrase. I'm bad at coasters. <laughs> I'm good at teaming, but coaster-wise, I'm kind of a mess. Though I really, for some reason, want to challenge myself or just mess with myself and ask you guys, drop any coaster terms you know in the comments below and I will try without using Wikipedia to think of like, what the hell could that be? <laughs> I have literally problem. Yeah, I wouldn't have a clue. I would just guess. Like, and I know what I was talking about before with you know the place where the coaster or the train would basically sit while the ride isn't operating. Like, it's not a switch track, but I forgot the word that it actually is. And there are probably a thousand other terms going into coasters and such but hey <laughs> it's well this channel's basically me rambling around like an idiot so making me feel like more of an idiot by throwing coaster terms at me isn't that far out of reach well yeah actually it is no it's actually pretty normal <laughs> anyway <laughs> Because of the, well, layout and basically the entire placement of the coaster. Obviously it had to tie in with water or some kind of thing with water. And we already have a right time, timed, well, <laughs> teamed to Poseidon. So I know that wouldn't be right to have another team or another ride themed to Poseidon. Though he does make somewhat of a cameo in this ride. Because Poseidon is just everything when it comes to the sea. But the team as you might have already seen in A the title or just the opening screen. Is Atlantis The Last Days. So it's basically just in the somewhat dark ride sections which is going to be annoying because I have to make miniatures which in Plant Coaster is almost impossible because everything in Plant Coaster is oversized but I want to give you a little bit of the idea of like you get to see the beauty of Atlantis and then you can see it's being swallowed <laughs> yeah that's why I'm placing magma or actually it's out in the open so it's lava I think yeah and I just wanted to have a little bit of like a pretty side to it but also a kind of dark side to it which I'm going to come back on in later episodes and before any of you guys ask because I well I make a thing of like the 40th episode 30th episode and well the 50th episode is also coming if I'm not able to finish the coaster before the 50th episode. 
it's not a big deal for me. Like, I'm not going to rush a coaster. That makes it appear like I'm rushing other things, which sometimes is true. <laughs> Never though for a video. Sometimes I just want to have things over and done with. I think some of you guys can kind of relate to that. It's just like, yeah, I spent a week on this. I want to have it done. Now I'm also getting flashback to Bromios. I'm going to pace myself with this coaster though. Mainly because I also make videos out of this coaster, so I have to pace myself. A little bit though. But if the coaster isn't finished before the 50th episode, no big deal. I will just make some teaming, making it look like it's still under construction or something. Because I think some of you guys might have already guessed what's going to happen with the 50th episode. If you do not, take a wild guess, I would say. <laughs> like, place your guess in the comments below. I'm actually interested in seeing what you guys would guess for, like, knowing that I like to kind of go big on, like, the, I would say, anniversary episodes, but then again, it's like every 10th episode, which is kind of strange, and, well, in a way, it. What I have in mind is going to work, but in a way it's also like... Yeah, I'm basically celebrating that I haven't dropped Theonopolis again. <laughs> but anyway, back to the drop. As you can see, this is the first time I actually use different kind of rocks in Theonopolis. Like, I've only used the sandstone rocks so far, and... It's more of just a tie-in with the lava and such that it's like, you know, sandstone rocks don't really work with that type of, well, material, so you want a darker stone. And then on, well, the top of the gorge or the ravine, I wanted to have a little bit of like, maybe there was some lava here, but it's solidified and now it's a bit more of a grayish stone while at the bottom of the ravine is like fresh lava that's just been cooled down. It probably has a name, that kind of stone, but I'm just going to call it freshly cooled lava. And that's why deeper in the ravine, it's darker. Out of the ravine, it's lighter. I don't know why I needed to, or why I felt like I needed to explain those things, but yeah. Also wanted to add waterfalls to just again tie in with the dark, not darker side, but the more prettier side, but also showing like, yeah, this city got flooded. But I'm going more into the story of basically Atlantis, probably in the next video, because right now I'm just like, I'm so happy that I'm building a coaster, which is weird because again, I'm not good at building coasters. And I'm, well, I'm more interested in building pretty things and scenery and such. But for some reason, this coaster, maybe because it's like completely new for me, I am just so happy with building it. But now I wanted to build something covering the dive part. And it's a little bit different than what you usually see me build. Like the amount of pillars. I'm trying to keep that to a bare minimal, but because I didn't want the Atlantis part to just be a reskin of Theonopolis, I actually went for a bit of a different architecture style. And I don't know if it's completely correct. If it's not, please tell me down below in the comments. But I went for a more Minoan style. Minoans or the Minoan civilization is like... I call it like the precursor of ancient Greece because, well, it was before, you know, classical or ancient Greece, but it was still, I would say, a big influence on like ancient Greece. Like it's situated, of course, in the same area, but the Minoan civilization for some reason collapsed. From what I know, even nowadays, we are not completely certain on why it collapsed, but basically 
I want to have a little bit less pillars, a little more just block, like block feeling. That's why the arch is not an arch, actually. It's, well, it's some kind of an arch, but it's a blocky arch or a staircase-like arch, which I think really works well. I also really like the adventure style or adventure pieces, which have this kind of more rough texture and yeah it really works i did keep the building completely marble white for the dark white sections that's probably not going to be it because it will make it seem like this well the dark white section is completely made out of marble but i just wanted to have something that sticks out like almost like a sore thumb but in a good way i don't know if you can put it that way but I'm going to but I really like this arch though it does remind me a bit of Fidian which is a project that is now pretty much dead yeah I'm just going to be honest with you guys that Fidian is pretty much dead I don't think I will ever really return to it but back to the some kind of arch because I wanted to have this kind of destroyed feeling to it and actually that worked out perfectly with like the pieces that I used because the normal grid walls you can't really you know turn or you know you can turn them but you can't like make it look like they are basically drowning in the earth but with the adventure pieces you can actually do that so I can actually you know make it look like it's is getting swallowed as it were and I really like that and then you know to make it destroyed you, you turn a few pieces or at least that's destroyed in my opinion or not opinion in my way of building but then going back at it this placement is probably going to change a little bit because I think if I'm correct I blocked one of the waterfalls if I'm correct that is yeah, I think I did. Because I see steam coming out of one of the walls. I did change it though. Like, you see, immediately I changed it. Be and now I'm blocking another waterfall. <laughs> like, that was a fun part to see. Like, oh yeah, I'm unblocking this waterfall. And I immediately block the next one. Yeah. I think, in the end, I just moved the waterfall instead of the building. Because it just... From the outside, it looks like a bridge, but then when you, you know, are in the coaster, you actually see that's more of an arch that's just being swallowed. And it's actually, in a way, good with the waterfalls, because from the outside, the waterfalls muffle the sound of, like, the lava effects. And so from the outside, you don't really get that rough, darker tone that the coaster is going to have and from the outside it just looks pretty I went a bit haywire with the nature part because I wanted to have the arch kind of overgrown anyway it worked and I am going to leave you with that I'm going to do some little bit of touch-ups behind the scenes as it were but I'm going to leave you with a screenshot of how it turned out and anyway, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, I hope to see you back in the next one. And I hope you all have an amazing day. See ya!